there are several reasons for grafting kiwi fruit. Maybe the kiwi variety you planted is not that good regarding taste. Or maybe the variety you bought doesn't produce well where you live. Actinidia deliciosa or green flesh fuzzy kiwi fruit cultivars like Award usually need hundreds of winter chill hours that you might not have where you live. Actinidia chinensis or golden flesh kiwi fruit have a smooth skin, are much sweeter and will be productive in areas where the Award isn't. Some Award mutations are also much less demanding in cold winter hours and tend to have an earlier maturation date. Lack of space is also a good reason to graft several different varieties on a couple of plants. This way you can enjoy different kiwis that would require several different male and female plants and much more planting space than you might have. So, personal preference and local growing conditions might force you to choose kiwi varieties that are different from the ones you planted in the first place. If you want to change the kiwi plants you have, you don't need to start all over. Changing varieties is quite simple if you use one of the grafting techniques that I show in this video. Just use the established rootstock of an older plant and graft the newer variety over it. Actinidia deliciosa male plants like Tomuri are one of the best options as rootstocks. These males are quite vigorous and are compatible with green and yellow flesh kiwi varieties. Their root system is also much more resistant to some problems that tend to affect yellow kiwis planted on poor soils like leaf chlorosis. First, you must obtain a few dormant scions of the varieties you want to graft. Some varieties can be exchanged freely, while others are proprietary and only available in the commercial circuits. Remember that yellow flesh kiwis tend to flower earlier, so they will also need a suitable male to achieve pollination. Several grafting methods can be used effectively to change varieties in kiwi plants. One of the best options is the whip and tongue technique. It works better with same diameter rootstock and scions. In this example, the scion is a bit smaller than the rootstock, so I will have to place it to one side so the cambium layers cross at some point.
Modified cleft graft is also a popular method and easier to execute. The tricky part is making the cut near the edge of the rootstock. A gentle rocking motion and a good control of the knife are essential to make a good cut. Unlike whip and tongue, when grafting using the modified cleft technique, scions can be much smaller in diameter than the rootstocks. Adjust the scion firmly against the base of the cut, so the back cut makes a good cambium contact. To know more about grafting details, like types of cuts and scion position, check the channel for my technique specific videos. Another good grafting option is the ship budding technique. This technique is very easy to execute and with a single scion you can make several ship butt grafts. Try to match the slot in the rootstock to the chip width and length to ensure a better cambium contact. Don't graft until the rootstock is awake from dormancy. In my area I wait until late spring to graft kiwi fruits. Remove all buds that grow below the graft to avoid competition. Whichever method you choose, the cambium layers of the scion and the rootstock must touch or cross in several points. Always wrap the graft area tightly and protect the graft from direct sun and rain during the first months. Here I am using a rubber base tape to tie the grafts. The tape prevents air and water to come in contact with the graft area. To achieve better results, I like to protect the grafts from the elements using a padded envelope. If you graft in late spring, the envelope should remain in place until the first leaves start to appear. This usually takes at least one month.
When chip pudding, using parafilm to secure the chip in position is important, since you can cover the bud with this special grafting tape to avoid dehydration. If exposed, the chip will dry out very quickly, so it has to be protected until the cambium layers fuse and the sap starts flowing. Using aluminium foil is a good option to protect the graft from direct sunlight. Usually, the buds of the successful grafts will start to break through the parafilm after 3 or 4 weeks. Open the aluminium foil when the first leaves start to appear but keep it in place a bit more to protect from direct sunlight. With the chip budding technique, it's very important to gradually remove the upper part of the grafted branch. Failure to do so will result in graft fail, as the branch apical dominance will inhibit the growth of the grafted chip and the bud will dry out. Keep in mind that you have to be able to keep some branch development or the plant might remove all the sap from the grafted branch. Check some of the videos on the channel to know more about other grafting techniques. Do you enjoy my work? You can help me make more videos easily. Just click the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video or leave a comment. Click the bell and turn on all notifications on your device so you don't miss my next videos. Thanks for watching.